Hello, my name is Gary and thank you for joining me on this journey. In this video series I plan to document the restoration of my 1984 Ford LTD Crown Victoria. Why did I buy a 38 year old car you ask? When I was a kid my dad also owned a 1984 Ford LTD Crown Victoria and I suppose I bought it because it reminded me of him and I thought it would be a a fun project car for us both to work on and hopefully maybe give it to him. I had found it online while just doing some random searches of vehicles and hadn't really thought to actually buy the car but I just thought it was kind of a neat thing to see. In January of 2019 one of my bosses at work passed away though and it made me realize that life is really short and you should take opportunities and chances when they come to you. I had a trip planned anyway up to New York and Chicago, so we stopped off in Willoughby, Ohio to purchase this car for $3,500 in January of 2019. I took the car to the nearby Midas who had some work done on it, new batteries, uh, brakes, those kind of things, and drove the car to upstate New York and had a wonderful time washing it and cleaning it and that's where the title card for this series comes from uh, right after its first wash and it sure did look beautiful and I was happy with it uh, at the end of that vacation I drove the car back down uh, with the intent of driving it to Austin but the brakes failed me and so I had to stop in the town of Bowling Green Kentucky which I had never been to before I took the car to um, a, a shop, I think it was a Midas as well, and they had it there for a week, and were trying to get everything fixed, but they were not capable of really doing that, so after a week I told them, hey, I gotta take the car and I gotta go, because I can't miss any more work, and so I drove the remainder of the journey with brakes that were rather sketchy. I don't think I would recommend people do that, but, you know, there it is. I got back to Austin and dropped the car off with my brother, who is a mechanic, at his shop. However, after a few weeks, he ended up leaving that job, so I had the car towed down to his house. Uh, he had it there for a while, but was unable to really devote any time to fixing it because he's got, you know, other jobs and a family to take care of. In January of 2020, so a year after I bought the car, my brother and I opened an automotive shop. Unfortunately, January of 2020 turned out to be really the worst time possible to open a business as, you know, COVID and all that. So uh, he didn't really have time to work on it there either. So in 2021, I had the car towed down to another automotive shop that said they could work on it but they went out of business shortly after that so I then had the car towed back to the automotive shop that my brother and I worked at and there it sat and sat and finally the, uh, we had to unfortunately close the business and I had the car towed down again to my brother's house uh, where it sat for another 10 months and so in November of 2022, I had the car towed up to my dad's house because I figured it would be a fun project for us both to work on. I had initially intended to just give him a completed and good car, but uh, life threw some curveballs, so that's okay. So the car has been able to drive, and I didn't have any issues outside of the brakes when I drove it, but unfortunately... Uh, it, since it sat for so long it has developed some other issues some parts and pieces have gone missing so that's something that I'm going to be working on as for myself my experience with vehicles is very limited I wouldn't say that I'm a mechanic at all I'm not a train mechanic certainly I know how to replace a tire and a battery and a light bulbs and small things like that but I really don't know how to diagnose problems in vehicles or to try and figure out what's going on or do like welding or anything like that is like I'm very much a, a, a layman in those kind of terms. 
so I thought it would also be a fun project for me to learn on as well. Most of what I know about cars and fixing them, I've learned from watching YouTube videos as well as reading about them. If you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend this as a course of action. My favorite channel so far has been Vice Grip Garage. It's a fun channel hosted by Derek Breary, who is much more knowledgeable in vehicles than I could ever hope to be. And he also seems like a really nice guy, and he has his family on some of the episodes. I'll put a link to his channel below if you'd like to follow it. After towing it up to my dad's house, the first thing that we decided to do was to try and get it running. So we turned the key and s just wanted to see what happened. Um, it clicked, but the starter didn't work, and that was pretty much as far as it would go. So we got a new battery for it, which uh, was well, a little over 100 bucks. Uh, got a battery charger for it, which was uh, about $90 or so, because we figured we'd be cranking on it a lot. Um, I got a wire brush and cleaned up the terminals on the solenoid, uh, as well as replaced the positive cable to the battery, uh, which was a simple task and I felt I could succeed at. Uh, so we did that and turned it over and it, it started to uh, crank, but the engine did not fire. The 1984 Ford LTD uses a throttle body fuel injection, uh, which is sort of the thing that happened between carburetors and modern sort of fuel injected, injected engines. So it's kind of complicated to work on. Um, we noticed that the fuel injectors were not, you know, injecting any fuel, so we, just to make sure we had all our bases covered, put a, uh, some gas in the gas tank, and when I was turning it over to try and start it, I started smelling gasoline, so I got out of the car and looked under it, and sure enough, the fuel tank um, and some of the fuel line was leaking. On our first major work day with it, we got some engine degreaser and just sprayed down the engine compartment. I purchased a $100 pressure washer from Home Depot and we sprayed down the engine compartment and tried to clean it up as much as we could then manually pulled out leaves and such from you know the various places where they accumulate at least the engine looked a lot cleaner now so that was a good thing so we decided to change the tank I had ordered one from the internet for about a hundred dollars as well as some new tank straps and I also purchased a cheap tool set from Home Depot for about twenty dollars we jacked the car up and put it on the jack stands we were able to get under it, but we found that the nuts and bolts on it were rather severely rusted. So we got some WD-40 and sprayed them down really good. I got a wire brush and tried as best I could to clean off the bolts so that they wouldn't be as rusted. With the bolts and nuts now cleaned and somewhat lubricated with the WD-40, uh, we spent the next several hours just kind of trying to turn them. Since we didn't have any power tools or a deep socketed ratchet, we had to just use the crescent wrench to just slowly, 10 degrees at a time, turn those bolts, which took a long time. Complicating that fact was that the tank was leaking from uh, where the straps were on it because it had rusted, so the gasoline was kind of falling on us, as well as just a tremendous amount of rust that the vehicle had uh, and dirt and debris that the vehicle had accumulated over its 38 years. Eventually though, we were able to get the gas tank off, which was a great feeling to drag it out from under the car. Comparing them side by side, we can see that the old gas tank was extremely rusted and would not have been able to provide clear fuel for the vehicle. When we properly recycled the fuel, we noticed that it was very, very brown in color and just not smelling like gas, so it was probably best that we did that. Our next step is going to be to put the hardware into the new gas tank and then install it. The brackets that I got with the new gas tank, though, have a different design than the old ones. The old ones have kind of just a clip that you slide in whereas the new ones have sort of a, a rounded thing that you slide a bolt through to hold them. I don't know if I'll be able to use the new ones or if I'll have to rely on using the old ones, but we'll find out. 
the old fuel pump in the car does still seem to be good because when I energized it, it was spurting fuel out, so we might be able to continue using that. Unfortunately, we have been unable to get the float out, which measures the amount of gasoline in the tank, so I'll have to go online and try and find a new one of those. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I'll try to answer them in the next video.